Let's take a look at our first experiment where we can measure uh, a result with an analysis of variance. And we'll start with a common experiment that you may have even done yourself, a website A-B test. An A-B test has visitors who come to a website and some are exposed to one version of the site and others are exposed to another version, hence the A and B term. We're gonna analyze this as an experiment uh, although obviously such an experiment doesn't take place in a lab as we might think of most experiments doing, but out there in the wild on the web. So here's the scenario we'll work with. First we'll talk about the design considerations of this experiment, uh, talk about some of the considerations when we're running the experiment, and then we'll move as we've done before to the R code and show how we would analyze this experiment statistically and report the result. So here's the scenario. Uh, let's say on a given day, uh, 500 uh, visitors to a website are treated as part of the experiment. Perhaps they're the first 500 who visit the website on that designated day. And let's say half of them are exposed to website A, and half of them are exposed to a variation of it, website B. Now that may not be the optimal way to run an A-B test. Perhaps it shouldn't just be on one day, for example. And perhaps it should be more than 500 people. Or perhaps it should be a certain number of people on a given day. All of those are good variations to consider, but for now we're going to keep it simple and just keep it to the scenario I described. We're interested in which website version causes people to view the most number of distinct pages. So maybe we think that a redesign of a website uh, say version B of this site, will uh, have people stay on the site longer and view more pages. So page, distinct pages viewed will be our measure. And uh, you could imagine in a, in a real world A-B test, we might also count time on site uh, and perhaps page loads or page views total uh, and other types of factors like that, maybe even clicks and things. So we're look, interested in the number of distinct pages that they view. So let's talk through some of the design considerations in this, in this experiment. First of all, let's think in terms of our variables. So I want to introduce the notion of independent variables and dependent variables. You maybe have heard these terms before. What are these? Let's make sure we're clear. Independent variables are the things we are manipulating. That's why they're independent. We're controlling them. Uh, so what's our independent variable in this simple website A-B test? It would be which version of the site they encounter, A or B. Dependent variables are the things that result from our manipulation, or sometimes called our treatment, which would be the site they're exposed to. The dependent variable is really the measure. And as I said before, we're interested in the number of distinct pages that are viewed. So we can call that pages. Now, let's talk in general terms for a moment. The idea behind an experiment is that some measure y is going to change and be a result of, and this is using the tilde like kind of R notation does, as we'll see more of, uh, some independent variables, let's say x, we just have one here, so we'll call it x, but if we had more than one, which we'll see later in the course, we may have x1 and x2 and x3 and so on. But y is, is related to x, um, and then we have to add plus epsilon, which is traditionally measurement error. The idea here in our case would be that the number of pages viewed, we think, might depend on the value that x takes. Is x website A or B plus measurement error? What's measurement error? Well, this is actually a very deep issue, but you can think of it as the random or error or noise that's in the measurements that, are, uh, that we're taking over, over people, over subjects, for this experiment. If I take 
you, you might say, well, why is there any measurement error? I mean, we know how many distinct pages they vi visit on the website. That's true. In that case, we know the measurement of the page count, uh, presumably without error, although there could be uh, perhaps some error in our code that's logging that or maybe some edge case that's not handled or something. But that's not just what measurement error is. Measurement error in this term is also considering the variation that naturally takes place when we measure things. So it doesn't have to be that we're logging it wrong. It could be that if I measured, uh, say, the same person on, on Tuesday and then measured them again on Wednesday, they may, in fact, have a different result. Uh, if I measure two different people, uh, they may have a different result due purely to the fact that they're different people, uh, not because the website really is, is, a, is causing that. Uh, these errors are taken to be uh, kind of random and usually normally distributed. And they are part of any experiment, any measurement. In fact, we, we don't know how much error may be in a measurement, how much variation may be natural variation. And that's why we need to have enough statistical power to draw the inferences over the population that we're after. Meaning, we want to know, is there a true difference between website A and B in this case, uh, in spite of the fact that we have some error in every single measurement because of the so-called natural variation uh, of, of any human behavior that we might be measuring. So that's what that term is. It's inescapable, and its exact value, of course, is unknowable. So, in our particular experimental case, we're looking at, as I said, the number of distinct pages being some relation to uh, the, whoops there, the site, the value of the site plus this error.